I wish I was lying to you when I say that a friend of mine paid a guy from her church $10,000 to renovate a bathroom and he never showed up. If you're new here, I'm Lena. I'm a realtor turned renovator. I've been around real estate and home renovations my entire life. And now I'm sharing with you some of the tips and tricks I've learned along the way so that you can help create a beautiful home and a beautiful life. And for lack of a better word, not get screwed over when you're hiring a contractor. So here are five things that I always do when I'm hiring someone to come help me with the project. I'm actually in the process of renovating our forever home. So while I do a lot of things on my own, I'm constantly hiring people to come in and help me for things that I don't have the time to do or the ability to do. And I am really careful about this entire process so I don't end up in a situation like that. So the first thing I always like to do is I like to get people who have referrals or their references from my friends. So when I'm starting a new project or I've moved to a new area, I always ask people that I know, hey, do you have a plumber? Do you have a roofer? Do you have an electrician? So I start by getting what I like to call warm leads, contractors and people who have done work for my friends or I've, I've been to somebody's house and I say, wow, that's really beautiful. Who did that for you? So I like to start with hiring people that have done work for people I know. Now, if I have to go totally cold and I don't you know, have someone for this and I'm just going out there and I'm going into Google, Rather than doing that, I like to use this app called Thumbtack. It's not, not sponsored by this video or anything, but Thumbtack I think is the best app out there. You can download it on your phone, it's free, and it will connect you with all sorts of professionals in your area that do home renovations, lawn care, cleaning, anything you really need, you can find it on Thumbtack. And you can put in photos uh, of what you're wanting done and then it will connect you with pros for free. And you can see those people's reviews. You can see the work that they've done. And I always find that those people are pretty responsive to me. And I get kind of, they reach out to me before I can even reach out to them. So I really like Thumbtack if I'm just going to go cold and try to hire someone. And I found some really great people on there that now I use consistently now after they did the first project for me. So number two is... I never hire anyone who is not responsive or doesn't show up to give me a quote when they say they're going to. I have a really busy life. I have three kids. I, I do all these things. So when I am making my schedule around when someone tells me they're going to show up and they don't show up, that ruins my like entire day. So if if I'm hiring someone, I'm just in the, you know, maybe it's somebody that my friend has put me in touch with, or maybe it's someone that one of my other contractors referred. That's another great way. Like if I have a HVAC guy and he says, oh, you need a roofer, I'll say, who do you know? Because they are usually going to refer to someone to you that does pretty good work. Now, if I text that person and they haven't texted me back in two or three days, well, that's not a good sign. How, how can I rely on you if you can't even communicate? And then what if you don't show up when you say you're going to show up and now my whole day is like, why would I hire them? So I, I sometimes get frustrated because I want to get it done and I want to find the person, but I never hire someone who doesn't respond and doesn't show up without reason because that's just setting the tone of how the project's going to go. If I, if I can't, communicate with you when you haven't even gotten the job yet, trying to manage them during the process or them showing up when they say they're going to show up is unlikely to happen. So again, I never hire anyone who doesn't respond to me and doesn't show up when they say they're going to show up without reason. And that saves me a lot of headache. That helps me just to get reliable people. So again, my whole day doesn't get ruined or thrown off when they don't show up or something changes. So number three is I always try to get three bids for a job. If something is new, I want to get three different people to give me their pricing and opinions on how the job would be done. This allows me to, one, feel like I'm getting a fair price for something because if I have one person come in and they've given me a price that's like left field and I have another person, they've given me a price that's right field and then I have someone that's, you know, cheaper than all of them, uh, is a little all over the place, but it allows me to kind of rein it in and say, okay, why did, did this person have a different way of suggesting to do it? Are they all the same? Um, and then I can use those three too to, to say, hey, I got this bid. They suggest doing this way or they cost this compared to you. So always get three bids because 
I like to do that because I, it, it makes me feel like I'm getting a fair cost and it allows me to interview several different people. And, and some people I tend to connect with better or like I said, I, I'll have someone come in and they'll seem great, but then I'll have another guy come in and man, he was so much more technical and he got on his hands and knees and he picked up the floor and saw what was under there where the other person, they just came in and measured. So always get, I always like to get three people. So that way I feel like I did my due diligence and I've hired the right person and I feel really confident going Going into a project, especially if it's a big project and it has multiple aspects to it. And that brings me to number four. When you get your bid, have them break everything down by a light item. Always, I always get it in writing and I always ask them to break it down. Like, for example, I recently did a bathroom renovation. I hired it completely out. I would love to tackle it on my own, but I don't have time. I don't have some of the skills for that. So when I got the quotes for that, again, I got it from a couple different people. And when I ended up going with the person that I won, we broke it down. And I said, can you please give me an estimate that breaks down every single item? So I want to know how much are you charging me for the demolition? How much are you charging me for the build out of the shower? How much are you charging me for the tile install, the electrical, line item by line item. And that allows me to either one, if I feel like something is overpriced, go back to them and say, hey, I recently had a project done like this and it only cost me that for the drywall. How did you come up with that price? And it breaks it down. And then I can see piece by piece what it's going to cost me. And I can negotiate that part a little bit. And I never pay them more than 10 to 15% of the total job as a deposit. I have had somebody come in here and say, uh, you know, I want the whole job up front and I never pay a contractor the whole entire job up front because I don't want them to run off with my money and never come back. So I always say I'm prepared to pay 10 to 15% of the total cost as a deposit and then let's establish a rolling schedule for the rest of the payout. So when I did the bathroom, I knew it was going to take three weeks. We sat down again and because I asked them for that line item, I could see what order things were gonna be done in. And I said, okay, at the end of week one, what's going to be completed? And then I knew that's what I owe you at the end of week one. So I like to set that expectation of, I'm not gonna pay you all up front. I will pay you this much and then let's establish how I'm going to pay you out. So that allows me to one, not be very vulnerable to where someone has taken all the money up front and I'm just hoping they're a good person and they're gonna show up and complete the job because I've heard so many horror stories of someone who paid a guy $6,000 to do a job. He came in for one day, did $500 worth of work, left, they never heard from him again. And so I try to avoid that at all costs. And again, establishing that rolling schedule allows me to feel like they're gonna come back because they're not gonna get paid if they don't finish that work and I'm paying for the work that's been done. And up until this point, it's worked out really well for me. I've, I've never had any issues with someone taking their money, my money and not showing back up because I don't pay them before the work is done outside of that initial 10 to 15%. And I also like to negotiate bet. And if you're someone who doesn't like to negotiate cost or you feel uncomfortable asking for a discount, the way I like to say it and what has worked well for me is let's say they quoted me a little bit higher than I had in mind. I'll say to them, I really like I really like you, I think you've done great work, I would love to hire you for this project, but I had only budgeted X amount of dollars and you've quoted me Y. Is there any way that you can get a little closer to, to what I'm prepared to move forward with? And if, and most of the time they're gonna negotiate a little bit. I mean, everything is negotiable and that feels a little better than asking like, is that the best you could do? You know, and again, if you have multiple quotes, I can also use that as some leverage to say, I'd like to hire you, this person quoted me this. Uh, and so again, I just, when it comes to the money aspect, I like to have that very clear of what I'm going to pay, when I'm going to pay it, and I like to get a little bit of a discount if I can get one. And one of the ways that I've done that is by bundling projects. I really love to bundle projects. So if I have somebody in here, let's say I have a painter, I say, hey, I need these two rooms painted. But down the road, maybe in a month or two, I wanna do these. What would be the price if I go ahead, and, you know, if you do a great job on this first time and I give you those other projects? Or maybe it's uh, some renovations. Hey, I wanna do this room and down the road we wanna do this. Could you give me any type of discount if 
if you get both of the jobs. So that's worked for me well in the past too. So that's just some of it when it comes to the money aspect, a way to protect yourself, a way that I like to get a little bit of a discount and a way that I know what I need to be prepared to pay and when to pay it. So that brings me to number five. The only thing that you should expect to be consistent when you are renovating a home is that something is going to change and that there are gonna be unanticipated costs or issues that you run into. And when this happens, it is so important that you establish with your contractor at the time what exactly needs to happen and how much that's going to cost. So I'll just share with you a recent story where my husband and I didn't do this. It was a miscommunication. I had hired some guys to paint a bedroom. They gave me the quote and I forgot to show them this very small closet, a three foot by two foot closet. I left, I was out doing something with my kids. My husband was here, the guys were finishing up and he goes, hey, you guys, uh, this closet was supposed to be part of it. And he just said, paint the closet, but he didn't asked them how much they were going to charge for the closet. So then he left, I came back, the guys were finishing up, it was time for me to pay them. And they quoted me what I thought was an insane amount for a very small closet that had no shelves. It was about half the cost of what they had quoted me for the room. And to be very honest with you, I felt like they were taking advantage of me. I felt like they came out to my home, saw it and thought, oh, we're gonna to try to get what we can get out of her. And it just put me in a very awkward position because here I had to push back. I had to, I didn't establish it upfront what the cost was gonna be because my husband and I were coming and going. So now I had this very awkward situation to deal with. And I did push back. I did say, can you explain to me how you came up with that cost when you know the whole entire room was this amount? So we had to push back, it was just uncomfortable. And they did work with me, you know, they worked with me, but in the end, I still felt like I overpaid versus at the time, if I would have shown them, if I would have been here and I would have said, oh guys, I forgot this closet, how much are you gonna charge me to paint it? They would have said $150, which was half the cost of the whole, you know, small room. I would have said, uh, you know what? I'll do it myself. I was really prepared to pay you about $50 extra to do that room. And guess what? They probably would have done it for $50 at the time. But now I'm in this awkward position where I have to, you know, come to an agreement. So that's number four. Just when something comes up to protect yourself, to make sure you're being fair to your contractor, put it in writing what the change order is and establish what the cost is going to be done before you move forward with that change. I hope that these five things that I do when I'm hiring a contractor to try to protect myself and for a lack of a better word, avoid getting screwed, help you, help you feel more confident going into your home renovations. Please, if you have any questions or any comments, drop them down below. I'll be happy to address them. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.